Let's make ice cream and talk Gilmore Girls. Hi, I'm Valerie Campbell. I was the key set costumer on Gilmore Girls, costume supervisor for a year in the life. Welcome to what I hope will be a series of me making more and more ice cream as I tell you stories from behind the scenes. Today, we're making pink lemonade, otherwise known as blood orange and Meyer lemon sorbet. So how did I start making ice cream? Well, about 20 years ago, I was in a bookstore. This was a couple years before Gilmore Girls. I saw a book on how to make ice cream. And I was intrigued. I didn't realize you could make it at home. I love doing everything from scratch, so I got that book and started experimenting. Around the same time, I lived around the corner from these art galleries in Echo Park. So I decided to throw a potluck to coordinate with the art openings. Once a month, I'd send a quick email to every single person I knew. Whoever RSVP'd first to the potluck got to pick whatever ice cream I was going to make. We'd enjoy our food, then head down to the gallery, and then head back up for ice cream. It did not matter what I made. There was always one person who was like, uh, I can't have that kiwi sorbet. I'm allergic. So that inspired me to make more and more flavors. What did this have to do with Gilmore Girls? Everything. A couple years after I started making ice cream, I started working on Gilmore Girls. And of course, because we were having these little potlucks, I'd get everyone's email address and invite them. Ed Herman was one of the first actors from Gilmore Girls to attend. And at that party, he went into Colin's side of the duplex and he saw a train he had when he was a little boy. And he looked at it and he said, I had that train when I was a little boy. And Colin said, take it. It's yours. It's just collecting dust. He ended up creating an entire railroad in his basement because of that train. By the way, if you're picking this fruit from your garden, please make sure to wash and dry it thoroughly. Now, where was I? Okay, so... I started making ice cream. I was working on Gilmore Girls. I would invite people to the potlucks. They'd tell me what their favorite flavor was. And if they were lucky enough to RSVP first with the dish they were going to bring, I'd make whatever they wanted me to make. Eventually, Colin and I moved to Glendale and the parties went from once a month to twice a year. I would invite every single person I knew that loved to cook. And some of them happened to be the people that I worked with on Gilmore Girls. Ed Herman, Keiko, Sean Gunn, Liz Torres, Rini Bell, Eris Alvarado, Emily Carota, Nick Holmes, John Cabrera, and even Alexis went to one of them. And there's definitely a few others that I'm forgetting at this exact moment. Apologies in advance. Sorry, guys. After Gilmore Girls ended, one of the actors was being interviewed for a book called The Gilmore Girls Companion. And the author of that book called me up one day because one of the actors didn't know the answer to a question that he asked. And they said, you know, I don't know the answer, but you should talk to Valerie. Valerie remembers everything. We chatted for hours and Eventually, he came out to L.A. to get a few more interviews done. He even stayed in our house. He timed his visit to make sure that he was here during one of the parties. Whenever we have a party, the ice cream line is out the door. And if you're lucky, you'll get a seat at the ice cream table. At one of these parties, my cousin's cousin Robin gave me this tiny sign and it said Valerie's Ice Cream Shop. At that same party, Jenny Yang, the future comedian, Keiko Agena, Rini Bell, and Keiko's husband Shin were all sitting at the table. When they decided to create an ice cream shop for me for real on Facebook, I mean, it really wasn't real. It was just a joke. They filled it with reviews and photos of all the ice cream that I had made for that party. I kind of forgot that it existed. A year later, they put more ice cream, photos, reviews. Eventually, I went, you know, maybe I should use this thing. So I started writing all of my ice cream recipes down. Then a few years after that, I supervised a year in the life. And whenever my favorite actors came in for a fitting, I would give them a little tiny taste. A couple months after we wrapped, I get a call from Mike Gandolfi, who played Andrew. Hey, they're doing this fan fest in Connecticut. Do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I had no idea that my entire life would change by saying, yeah, I want to go to that. We had such a blast. It was like walking down memory lane and also experiencing Connecticut in a way that I had never experienced at working on the back lot of Warner Brothers. Because I was still in contact with a lot of the actors, I actually helped them get a few of them to participate. The first fan fest was in Washington Depot, Connecticut, which is the same place that Amy and Dan visited when they were 
working out the details for Gilmore Girls. The fan fest was so successful and so much fun that they invited everybody back the next year to do it again, this time in Kent. The next year, Jenny said, I can't pay you to come, but if you want to sell something at the festival, you can. Like, do you want to write a book? I'm like, that's a lot to ask to write a book. I mean, like, how about I just make ice cream and we talk Gilmore Girls? So the festival bought a hand crank ice cream maker. And as I was telling stories about Gilmore Girls, people would come up, ask me a question. I'd make them churn the ice cream and we talked about Gilmore Girls. It was a lot of fun. A few months after the fan fest ended, we were all at Stan Zimmerman's place. Stan was one of the writers for Gilmore Girls. He actually just wrote a new book if you want to check it out. It's called The Girls from Golden to Gilmore. Stan was doing this play. It was called Pledge. Vanessa Morano, who played April, was in the play, as well as Artie O'Dally, who was the guy that was on top of the tower in You Jump, I Jump, Jack. He was the one responsible for putting the belts around them and telling them something about them testing it on potatoes, something like that. After the play was over, we all got together at a little bar and chatted. It was then that Jenny and Marcus, they're the ones that run the fan fest, suggested that I write a book now, I had told them before that, like, no, I'm not a writer. Uh, that's a lot of work. And they were like, no, you love telling stories. You can share your recipes and tell the stories about the people that inspired them. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I went to bed. And when I woke up the next morning, I realized that I had a story that I could tell. A few days later, as I started to write the story down, I realized that it didn't want to come out of me typed on a computer. It wanted to be hand drawn. So I drew every element of it, including the recipes. As I was sitting next to my set partner on set, I drew a watermelon and I asked her, what does this look like? And she said, a watermelon. Hmm. I drew a hand holding mint. What does this look like? A hand holding mint. It was then I realized I was onto something. Oh, by the way, I have to clean my kitchen before we can start cooking. Let this be a reminder that you might need to clean your kitchen too. So let's just do it. And in a moment, we will be making sorbet. When I started writing the book, I was working on a TV show called Timeless. Every day, I would start drawing in between shots whenever no one needed me. And everyone would look behind me and go, what are you working on? And I'd tell them, I'm working on a little ice cream cookbook. I'm illustrating it. And they would be like, oh my God, that's so cool. Even the guys. There was this one time, this one actor comes up to me and I am drawing a phantom mask. And he says, are you drawing a phantom mask? And I said, yes, I'm drawing a phantom mask for my ice cream cookbook. I know this sounds weird. I will tell you all about it after the next take. When they called cut and moved on, we started talking. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm drawing this ice cream cookbook because I used to work on Gilmore Girls. When I said Gilmore Girls, his eyes popped out of his head. He was like, I love Gilmore Girls. I was not expecting that. I mean, after all, most of the fans of Gilmore Girls are women. And um, that actor's name, Matt Lanter. I did not know he was a fan until that moment. And we started to talk about the show whenever I saw him. He's not the kind of guy that you would expect to be a fan of Gilmore Girls. So I said, how did you get into Gilmore Girls? And he said, well, when I first started dating my wife, she was a fan and she made me watch it. Every time we'd watch, she would give me a little back scratch. And I fell in love with her and the show. Every time I saw Matt after that, he would just ask me every single question he could think of about Gilmore Girls. We are getting close. Are you done cleaning your kitchen yet? Don't worry, this was on Hyperlapse, so it's much faster than it actually took me to clean. There were a few of the actors on Timeless that loved ice cream, and every time they saw me, they flipped out, screaming my name across the stage, ice cream! And I would always give them a nice little sample. In fact, this flavor, the one that we're making, is actually dedicated to Claudia, who played Gia on Timeless. Now, don't be scared by the quantity of oranges and lemons you see. I actually need to make a very large batch. I'm going to be serving ice cream up at the Doctor's House Museum for the event that takes place the weekend before Easter. So if you live in the Glendale area and it is the weekend before Easter, chances are I am at the Doctor's House Museum giving ice cream to little children. Okay, where was I?
We're going to need a lot of zest for this recipe. So before you juice those lemons and oranges, please zest enough for the recipe. Okay, where were we? After the show ended, I took five months off and I dedicated myself to writing the book. So many people were interested, not just Gilmore Girl fans, but real people, dudes, electricians, grips. Everyone that I came across was like, oh my God, this is really cool. I love the way that this is illustrated. Looking at this, even though I don't cook, I understand it. I feel like I could make this recipe. And because I had that Facebook page, I had a ton of recipes that I had already written down. I ended up doing a Kickstarter and raising $8,000, which we then matched so that we could buy 1,500 books. At the end of the year, I had it in my hands and it was just so exciting. Every show I worked on, I'd bring the books with me and sell them. I'd go to FanFest and sell them. And then the pandemic hit. I had 200 books left and no one to sell them to. And I was also in the middle of revising and expanding the new book. It's basically the old book and the new book merged with corrections and a lot more stories and art. I gotta say at this point, I had a lot more things to worry about than uh, selling an ice cream cookbook. So I slowed down and relaxed. And we had people over. Not really. We had them on the front porch and we would look at them through the window. But one reason that they would come over was because I would take pill containers, you know, those seven day pill containers, and I would fill them with a different ice cream and each day, push it out the window, shut the window and breathe again while we talked through the glass. It was the most incredible thing that happened during the pandemic for not just us, but for the people coming to the window. Sometimes we were the only people that they had seen maskless in the last several months. It was such a special experience. We called it the ice cream social distance. And their little pods would hang out on the front porch eating ice cream and just enjoying life for one quick moment. And I'm so grateful for those visits because one of our dear friends, Monaco, the last time we saw her was on that front porch. After lockdown, she ended up passing away from cancer. And the crazy story of how we met is also in the book. If it weren't for a certain silent movie star, we would never have met. Monaco, mandarin orange vanilla with dark chocolate fudge. Oh, it's so good. It is like an orange creamsicle with tiny soft chips of chocolate spread throughout. My first show after in the middle of lockdown, we were still masked up wearing shields and gowns. Um, it was called Sweet Girl. And I met this guy named Tiger. Tiger ended up buying a book and he was like, you need to join TikTok. And I'm like, listen, I don't do dances. I am not going to dance. And he's like, no, you can sell the book on TikTok and tell stories. It's really a great place. You guessed it. Another surface to clean. Oh, where were we? So I joined TikTok. I started making content over there and my like third video went viral. 2,000 people saw it. 600 people liked it. And I was like, oh my God, the power of this app. This is incredible. Like any video or post I'd make anywhere else, no one would ever see it. And then I started talking about Gilmore Girls. And I can tell you a story about Gilmore Girls you just have to ask. And while you're asking right now in the comment section, I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm on this app right now. The other day, I'm up at the Doctor's House Museum. We're giving tours and I'm out front giving ice cream because I always bring ice cream with me everywhere I go. So these two women are hiking down the trail right next to the doctor's house. I see them. I'm like, hey, you want to take a tour? And they're like, oh, I don't know if we have time. And I said, well, do you want some ice cream? Because I always have ice cream. It's the way to entice people to come and take a tour. Also, it's a way to tell people that I make ice cream and that, uh, you know, if you want to buy a book and make it yourself, you can. Speaking of which, we're finally at the sorbet portion of actually making this because it took me forever to clean my kitchen. So we start talking to these two ladies. One of them, her name is Lanchin. And I only remember that because we exchanged information of social media types. I find out that she is on YouTube. She's just Lanchin on YouTube. And I was like, I need to pick your brain because I have no idea what I'm doing here. And she said, you know, just make like 14 minute plus videos and you'll be fine. And that in a nutshell is my story. If you want to know something else, please let me know in the comments.